So the 2.93 LTS version of Blender is now available, and this is a big step because this marks the end of an era, as it says, because this will be the end of the two versions of Blender. We're now going to step on to 3.0. I've just brought this other web page up here on the right. You can see that this was the original plan for the roadmap, that we had uh, the 2.8 versions going down to 2.9, 93 LTS with two years support incoming. So this would be good for production companies that only want to make things using stable versions of Blender and don't want to accidentally risk losing data on experimental versions and then we're moving on to the 3.0 series so it's been years it's been a long time since there's been a major version change like this and it's quite funny how they notice here new numbering after 21 years the blender 2.x series gets a wrap and there's been lots of questions about why they didn't jump to 3.0 way earlier back in the day but i think part of it has to do with being afraid of making such large jumps like that but i'm, I'm glad that they're finally actually moving on like this anyway whenever they take big steps like this they always put a lovely web page up on the website explaining all of the features and and I'm so glad that they invest the time in doing this. So on blender.org slash download slash releases slash 2-93, you'll be able to scroll down and have a look through all the major features and even some of the minor ones as well. They have these lovely animations and demonstrations. You can see that there's a focus on uh, geometry nodes. So this is really cool. I'm glad that they're actually sticking with this. You can do lots of things now, especially modifying attributes of objects and uh, having things react to other pieces of data in the scene. Really, the geometry nodes is going to be useful for all kinds of artists, although I'm specifically thinking that most graphics artists are going to make massive use out of this but in some cases it's going to replace the particle system because one of the main use cases they were developing this for and you can see the demo on the right here is for scattering because the blender animation studio wanted dare i say a more parametric way of doing object scattering in the scene but it is extremely useful so i'm glad they're sticking with it and i think the geometry nodes will have a lot of potential in the future now speaking about that if you do want to learn more about geometry nodes i think erindale is the place to go they are the person behind the new splash screen for Blender 2.93. And if you take a look at their YouTube page, and if you're feeling a bit sadistic, they have a 14 and a half hour long video where they provide a breakdown of making that splash screen, this still life artwork that was made using geometry nodes. But of course, there is the demo that you can download as well from the website blender.org slash download slash demo dash files. Now, I really like they've accumulated a wide variety of demos like this because it seems like there's already quite a lot of use cases that people will be able to adapt these demos for. One of the really cool ones that they're demonstrating here are the procedural buildings demos. And you can see that with geometry nodes, you can expose parameters on the modifier stack so you can easily control the result of the node tree. So this one's by Philippe Del Rio, and I think this would be really cool for helping people put together like towns and city scenes, although performance may be an issue. But there are lots of other demos as well, flower scattering, ball in grass, candy bounce, abstract monkey. I can imagine lots of people doing variations of this easy, satisfying abstract monkey animation in Blender, Blender tutorial. Hi, Ducky. Um, <laughs> there's other demos as well, the ripple dreams. That's what people will call me if I don't stop ordering takeaways. Um, so yeah, there's just there's lots to go through. I, I really, really love that they have this available because I think one of the best ways to actually learn with Blender is to play and experiment with very visual things right in front of you rather than stare at very bland documentation and basic tutorials all the time. But sculpting has also gotten some improvements and this is something again that I'm just so happy about because sculpting was something that I really enjoyed doing in the 2.7 series of Blender. And I know I wasn't the only one. I remember Zacharias Reinhardt wanted to put together a kind of code quest type thing for improving the the sculpting system and then Pablo Debarro came along to the development team and just like blew everything away. The, the improvements have been absolutely fantastic and I mean take a look at this. So you can do these really cool masking patterns now. So you can isolate and modify different areas of the mesh in one go and it's really really cool. I mean you can take a look at this character here. He's kind of building a pattern of a mask around the horn and then just insetting some of those areas. So it brings out this lovely jagged pattern and I just think wow that's really impressive. So there's been a focus on masking for the sculpting tools. And it seems like you can build these up in an additive way. Take a look at this demo here, where he's kind of building this pattern around the body and around the eye as well. I think a lot of people are going to find this useful. So if there are any 2D artists or kind of 2D, 3D hybrid artists, there's been improvements to Grease Pencil as well. And this sounds really cool to me. Automatically generated grease pencil lines around your object. This would be really cool for CAD visualizations, which is, I think, the angle that they're going for with this demo here. See how we have this object here, and it's kind of generated different grease pencil lines around it with the use of the line art modifier. I really want to give that a try. This reminds me of, I think, um, Jama Jurabayev designing a fighter jet by drawing out grease pencil lines in 3D space and then converting them to curves. I think, and then thickening them out. And then you could basically turn a 2D drawing into a 3D object. So I've always been very keen on seeing the further potential of where Grease Pencil can go. And I think it's lovely as well that on this webpage, they're actually sharing community-made content. 
I think it's really good that they're sharing the love and bringing some attention to other people. And of course, there are grease pencil demos you can try and not as many as geometry nodes, unfortunately. But there is also, as you can see, a lot of content available on Twitter, which I'm sure will help to inspire you. One of the other interesting things about Grease Pencil is they now have this new kind of interpolation operator. So this is really going to help with animating different strokes. And I'm just reading this now. Import SVGs files as Grease Pencil objects. That's going to help massively with the kind of interoperability between different softwares and Grease Pencil. So I wouldn't be surprised if changes like these lead to like a whole wave of animators that were using other softwares coming on over, maybe even especially YouTube animators, because I've seen that Blender is definitely raising its reputation in the uh, YouTube creative community, not just specifically in the Blender community, but it's getting out into other corners of YouTube as well, which is very interesting to see. They have a new fill tool, which is more precise and smarter apparently, but this is really interesting, multi-frame fill. So you can fill in like the same or different objects across multiple frames. I think that's really cool. Operations that kind of span an animation. I guess that'll really help to speed up dedicated animators workflows. Now we're moving on to Eevee and I'm really glad to see that they're actually still working on this rendering engine. We start off the section with an awful pun, more than meets the eye. Uh, volumetrics are now faster, more stable, supports soft shadows and area lights. And I believe that it supports all different shapes for the area lights as well now. I'm glad to see this because when experimenting in the past, I was quite disappointed with how area lights were only kind of like restricted points when it came to being represented in the volumetrics. So I think this is going to allow for a lot more creative lighting. They've added diffuse, specular and uh, volume controls for how the lights and EV will interact with the scene. Uh, this is important because when I did my breakdown for the Epoch short recently, you may or may not have watched that, but I made a point about how useful the volume control was for individual lights because it allows you to get very specific, exquisitely controlled color gradients across the volume while those lights are still interacting with objects in the scene. So having extra influence controls like this is just really, really cool. The depth of field has also been improved quite a lot. It can handle close-ups and outlines much better. So two things to look at here is uh, if you look at the rim of this pot, if you take a look at the new version, we can see that it's more appropriately blurred and it's not kind of cutting off strangely around the edges. And these back outlines here by the windowsill, if we bring this over, it's not strangely blown out. So there have been some really good improvements in that regard. And yes, there have been volume improvements. So volume shaders in Eevee now support area lights and soft shadows. This is fantastic. If you've been around for a while, you know that there was a group of us in the Blender community that were kind of obsessed with building nebula visualizations using Eevee volumetrics. So I know that Brent Patterson, Mark Kings, North Lab, Alexander of Dre's Trinity Media and myself were doing a lot of this. Um, if I take a look on Twitter over here, I've brought it up. Brent's been doing more experimentations again, testing out these new improvements and seeing whether it's feasible to do uh, better nebula animations because one of the issues in the past was when you did animations with lighting affecting the volumetrics there was all of these weird banding effects it seems that it's still not perfect but if you have no lights in your scene you can get some pretty smooth animations without the banding and i've done a couple of experiments just in preparation for this video i did one dark one without any lights and you can see that it's quite smooth we've got a nice nebula there this is just powered by the emissive properties of the volumes and then i have a second one with lighting which is just disgusting it's awful take a look at all that banding here around the edges and you can see how this kind of darkness is scanning across the nebula so it's still not great but if you're careful with how you set the scene up then you can get some pretty smooth effects for anyone that likes denoising, there's been improvements to the open image denoise. The old one has less detail than the new one now, and you can see this by scrubbing this change across. I don't know how well this will be represented on the YouTube video. But other than that, there's just been a bunch of, you know, other smaller changes. There's quite a lot packed into this one. If you're interested in trying it out, then, you know, head on over and update your Blender. But I'm just very happy to see that they're continuing with all of these improvements and going at such a good pace. Obviously, Blend has received a lot of extra funding over the last few years, especially from other corporate investments like Epic Games. They provided a nice grant. But I'm just coming over to this blog post for a minute because I've received a couple of comments from people asking whether Blender or the Blender Foundation will be improving EV and cycles in the future. And obviously, as you've seen from the changes we've taken a look at, EV is definitely getting some improvements. But of course, if you've been paying attention recently, Cycles X was announced, which is basically eventually going to replace Cycles. It's just much better performance, especially for in the editor viewport when moving things around while looking in the rendered Cycles mode. The overall render performance is much better and it's just really impressive and you can try it out. There's a special branch for it. I also mentioned that in the rendering tips video and Decoded did a really good video about it as well. But anyway, this blog post here was added on the 4th of this month and it basically outlines the improvements, the changes, the features that they want to add to Eevee in the future. 
So this line sums it up pretty well. For the Blender 3.x series, Eevee's core architecture will be overhauled to make a solid base for many new features to come. The following are the main motivations for this restructuring. So render passes in real-time compositor, that is something I really want because I really miss working in Unity. I had so much control over like the post-processing effects and stylization while building scenes. And it's something that I think has been desperately missing from Blender, being able to kind of modify the look and the style while you're working in the scene, not having to wait until after rendering a frame and then after compositing has finished. Real-time compositing is I think something that's very important. Now, screen space global illumination. Yes, I think this is something that should be in built in Eevee. So I'm glad that they're taking a look at this. Hardware ray tracing, good. Volumetric improvements, of course, we've spoken about that. New shader execution model, nice and much more. So yes, they are definitely dedicated on improving the Eevee rendering engine. This is very good to see. And I think Blender is going to have a very exciting future. But of course, if you watched my previous video on Unreal Engine 5, you'll know that there's quite a bit of competition in the uh, real-time graphics department. Anyway, hopefully this video has kept you up to date. Feel free to go and try this new version of Blender. There's lots to play around with. If you like this video, consider signing up to the Patreon to help support my work. You can also get your name put at the end of the videos. So thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe and I will see you next time.